Now, should women sacrifice having a family to ensure equality in the workplace? Nigel Farage seems to think so. His claims earlier this week that women make different choices from men for biological reasons has prompted quite a backlash. Let's see what he said. If you're building a career, let's say in the broking industry, uh, which is what I did uh, for most of my career here, you, know, you are as valuable as the client base that sticks with you and will move with you. And in many, many cases, women make different choices in life to the ones that men make simply for biological reasons. And if a woman who has a client base, has a child, and takes two or three years off work, she is worth far less to the employer when she comes back than when she went away, because that client base will not be stuck as rigidly to her portfolio. And, I, and I'm, I'm afraid I sometimes think that we look at the figures, the, the, the pay gap, in a city between men and women and assume that it's still an old boys club full of discrimination. Actually, pre-Big Bang, it was. No question about that. When I first worked in a city, it was a deeply sexist place. So it, you know, it really was. That's all gone completely. I don't believe in the big banks and brokerage houses and in Lloyds of London and everywhere else in the city, I do not believe there is any discrimination against women at all. I think young, able women uh, that are prepared to sacrifice sacrifice the, the family life and stick with their career will do as well, if not better, than the men. Controversial. With me <laughs> in the studio is a woman who's been very successful in the city. <sighs> Louise Cooper is a financial analyst and commentator and a mother. And, a mother. and is champing at the bit to discuss <laughs> Nigel's comments. But first of all, Nigel, you <laughs> said that... Well, I, I said... I, can, let, yeah, just, go just, just get the ground rules here yep. clear. If you're a television presenter... Right? You can Which have I a baby <laughs> and you can have a baby and come back, no problem. If you're a dentist, you can go. If you're a financial markets analyst, <laughs> you can take time off and come back. If you're working on a brokerage desk, right, which I did for many, many years, I would not even take a fortnight's holiday right. because that was too long to be away from those accounts. So I was being very, very specific. Except you said there was no sexual discrimination you believed against no. women in city well, firms. Well, city firms... What do you base that on? City firms are far more hard-nosed and, 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 and look at the bottom line. And, and I don't believe... I do not believe the reason women are paid less in a city is because we have gross discrimination. Louise, you know, I try hard not to lose my temper on air and I really try <laughs> hard not to insult uh, people on air. Don't hold back. But for, I'm sorry, Mr Farage, for you, I'm going to make an exception because what you are saying is mm. laughable. Is you are talking out of your bottom. So why are women paid so less, So for all, for why are women all the paid working... Less? Let Louise put the case. And for all the working mothers out there who are battling day to day, and I know lots of them in the city, but not just in the city, but elsewhere as well, who are discriminated against, who are paid less than their male colleagues, who are looked over for promotion, I say on behalf of them, shame on you. And I say double shame on you because you actually have daughters. What kind of example are you setting to your daughters by saying what you said? So are you saying that the banks and brokerage houses in the City of London are openly and clearly discriminating against women today? Openly and clearly is difficult, but they are discriminatory. The point you make well, about maternity well, leave, well, OK? The two, you say the word maternity leave, mm. women go away for two or three years. I had a child, I had four months maternity leave. Mm -hmm. You know, you, the maximum you can take is 12. So why this, oh, women go away for three years? So that's the first comment, maternity leave, yep. gardening leave. OK, so let me just explain what gardening leave. In the city, if you leave your firm, you can't start to work anywhere else for at least three months, very minimum. Most firms have six, yeah. 12, <coughs> 18, 18 months of gardening leave, OK? So that costs the firm, because you leave on day one with your black bean bag, that costs the firm that you were hired with, and the new firm are willing to wait 6, 12, 18 months for you to turn up. So, if it was so important for you to be there every second of the day and not have three months maternity leave, why does the whole city run on the let's poach other staff? Because clearly, and even more in the brokerage industry, mm. there is a lot of gardening leave and people and brokerage firms are willing to pay many millions to guarantee someone who will arrive in six, 12, 18 months' time, which is far longer than maternity leave. So don't give me maternity leave. I say gardening leave back to you. And no one talks about that for discrimination against men. Well, the reason gardening leave was put in place is because people know that actually any time away from accounts brings in and increases the level of risk. So that's the very reason gardening leave was introduced. Look, I had a... I mean, you know, when I ran a brokerage company, I had a guy came to me one morning and said, Nigel, I'm resigning. 
I'm going to do the childcare at home because my wife's got a better job than me. And there are now a million men who are at home bringing up children. I'm making a general point that in a, in a fiercely competitive world like the brokerage end of it, that women are disadvantaged if they have children. Now, that is a simple statement of fact. And, and, and so there is discrimination do... against women who have well, children. That's well, what you're well, saying. In I, the city, I, I, I'm they are the discriminated against. I'm making the point that, that that lifestyle choice of having a family makes it harder to... It doesn't make it impossible, and there are some people that manage it, but that, I think, explains why women are paid less. Okay. I do not accept that the City of London now discriminates heavily against women. You I so don't accept that. I, I don't accept that. No, 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 I don't accept that at all. Right, so you're saying women who have families are discriminated against. Women who decide to have children women... are discriminated against. No, they're, 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 they're not discriminated against. They, in, in, well, in, in a bottom-line business, they make it harder for themselves. It's simply a statement of fact. Well, except uh, Louise isn't the only person who's been yeah. screaming, oh, metaphorically or literally. Ruby McGregor-Smith, Chief Executive of MyTai, Anne Richards, Chief Investment mm. Officer of Aberdeen Asset yeah. Management, Lynn Lindsay Ricks, MD of Santander Wealth yep. Management. They all have children. They're at the top of their game. It can be done. There aren't many. They're discriminated okay, against. So, so Janet Yellen became boss of the Federal Reserve, possibly the most powerful job. She's got kids. I did, when she became head of the Federal Reserve, I wrote a piece about it and said, these are, in my view, the ten most influential financial women in the world. I read that. Eight of them have kids. It is laughable. You know, that one of them is the head of one of the most successful hedge fund businesses in the world. Hedge funds do their, you know, spend 20 hours a day at work. One was private equity. One was, uh, you know, Reinhardt and Rogoff. One Christine, of those women. Christine Lagarde. Christine, Christine well, Lagarde at the IMF. It is laughable no, that because they a person has yeah, a womb, no, 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 they, no, no, they no. can't do, they can't they do a job. To their well, we have to make a decision here, don't we? You know, women are paid 30% less than men in the city. Why is that? And I'm suggesting it's because they make different lifestyle choices. And whilst there are some women who want to have families... Is that and, right, though, and, Nigel? Whilst... Is that right? Yes. It may, it may not be right. It may not be right, women but it is, way, it is the way the world is. A lot of women, some view. women, some women are happy to have a family and a big job. But it's a hell of a difficult thing uh, for them to do. So, so if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, then we do have gross discrimination in the city. Uh, I have an alternative view of the reason why women are paid 30% less in the city is because you play deliberately to all the sexist bosses oh, out that. there and allow and cause this that very is, problem. I'm, I'm you have I'm made sorry. the situation that worse. Absolutely for all rubbish, the working mothers, not just in the city, you have made the situation that worse. Can I put you, are women worth less in your party if they have children? No, because they're not... I, I, listen, I, I repeat, I was talking about a dealing room environment in the brokerage business, a very specific audience, not about professional women in general. You can see how it's fueled the argument, can't uh, you? I can, I... Because, because people deliberately choose to have a row over it. I was, oh, being, I was being factual. I think... I, I, well, you, as look, I say, as I but say... But it's been demonstrated say, that it isn't I factual. I would not take a fortnight off when I was doing that job. I, you know, no more than One a week. One thing I will because say of that to you, risk. Louise, about women in the city, they earn, relative to many other industries, a lot of money. They can afford to pay for that childcare without losing the majority of their salary. I put to you, in general, that can be a big problem. Uh, well, exactly, and that is, you know, so, again, when I said shame on you, Mr Farage, I say shame on you for all the daughters out there who are trying for a career in the future and for all the women who want to work but because childcare is so damned expensive in this country, cannot work but want to, you are making their situation no, no, worse. No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about 99% right. of the jobs market in all this right. country. I was talking about one specific area. Thank you, <laughs> Louise Cooper. Are you finished? Yeah, I've finished, yes. <laughs>